Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of the Breakfast Meeting, brought to you by Vetiva Capital Management in partnership with Frontier Africa Reports. In today's session, our economist, Ibuko Moyeni, will be speaking to us on X-raying the E-Naira. Um, following that, we'll get the usual rundown of the equities and fixed income market. And we'll also get um, headlines from across Africa, brought to us by our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports. As usual, the meeting is being recorded and the audio file may be shared with third parties. We're also streaming live on our Vertiva online Facebook page if you prefer to view or join from that platform. The session is set to last for 30 minutes inclusive of Q&A. And if during the course of the meeting you have any questions for our speakers, you can send them in using the chat function available on Zoom. If you're joining us from Facebook, you can make use of the comment section. However, if you prefer to speak, you can utilize the raise hand function and you'll be given an opportunity to speak. We'll now start off with Simbiad from our Global Equities Desk and should be reviewing some markets from across West Africa. Good morning, Simbiad. Uh, good morning, Victoria, and good morning to everyone. Um, so like you mentioned, I'll be doing a quick recap of yesterday's activities across some West African markets. And I'll be starting in BRVM, where we've continued to see um, profit-taking activities persist as the composite index shed four business points yesterday. Uh, so we saw sell-offs in uh, Vivo Energy, losing, which lost about 18% in the last three trading sessions, uh, making it the worst performing stock of the week. Uh, we also saw investors take profits in a couple of banking stocks like uh, the likes of SIBC and Bank of Africa in Senegal and Benin. Uh, speaking to market activity, uh, so, uh, so compared to the mixed session on Wednesday, Market recovered as volume traded improved significantly by 473%, while turnover jumped by over 100% due to the large volume of trades recorded in Ecobank, uh, which was about 2.9 million units. Uh, going into today, we expect market to close the week bearish as investors continue to take profit. Uh, over in Ghana, uh, the market also closed negative. Composite index was down 23 basis points as losses were recorded in Fan Milk and GCB Bank, uh, both canceling out the 2.63% gain in Cow Bank. Uh, despite negative close, activity levels improved, and this, and this time GCB um, accounted for 80% of traded volume, um, followed by Cow Bank and Guinness Ghana Bureaus. Uh, for today, we expect the market to recover from the negative close, given investors' demand, particularly around names like GCP, Cowbank, and MTN. Uh, like we've always mentioned, for any of our listeners looking at exposure in any of these markets, they can reach out to us via email at dealingadvertiva.com mm -hmm. or to our sales team at salesadvertiva.com and uh, we'll get back to them. Uh, finally, in Nigeria, uh, where the market continues to trade bearish as yesterday's session ended with all sectors closing in the red, uh, with the exception of the insurance space, uh, leading to an eight basis point loss for the market. Uh, in consumer goods, we saw Unilever close down by about 8% um, after trading flat at 15.60 couple for over a week, uh, reducing the year to debit for that counter to 2.5%. Uh, we also saw investors take profit in Guinness, given it had gained about 33% last week following the positive reaction to the earnings results. Uh, in industrial goods, uh, WAPCO also closed down as uh, we have seen profit taking in the last three sessions, given the decent price appreciation in last week, uh, which was about 11%. Uh, for other sectors, we had Orlando with oil and gas, uh, and the likes of UB and access and banking, all shedding points. Uh, market activity declined yesterday. Um, trade volumes fell by 43%, uh, while turnover decreased by 31%, ending what, what could be described as a quiet session. Uh, so the market has traded bearish most of the week as sellers continue to dominate the market. Uh, for the last trading session of the week, we foresee a bit of recovery in terms of market performance, barring any significant dip in any of the large cap names. Uh, thank you, and that'll be all from the equities Dex. Thank you very much, Simbiat. Um, just before we move on to the next speaker, we have launched a poll and would like everyone to choose um, the response to the questions. Thank you. 
Um, next up is Omar Gay, and he'll be reviewing fixed income and currencies. Good morning, Omar Gay. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, everybody. Um, system liquidity declined slightly to open at about 130 billion positive yesterday, coming from the 137 billion that was recorded on Wednesday. Despite the decline in system liquidity, interbank rate losing by an average of 50 basis points on the back of the reduced fund pressure in the market yesterday, as OBB and overnight rate closed at 12.5 and 13 percent, respectively. For today, we expect interbank rate to trade at higher levels on the back of a possible CRRO debit. The parallel market remained flat yesterday to trade at 517 naira to a dollar, where the annual window opened at 414.49 naira to a dollar. The highest trade that was recorded on Thursday was 444 naira to a dollar, while the closing rate was 415.1 naira to a dollar. Um, despite the pressure from US. Um, OPEC Plus members have agreed to continue with their current um, output plan, which is to gradually increase oil production by about 400,000 barrels per month each day. As a result, Brent and WTI gained about 0.5% and 1.1% to open today at 81.08 and 79.64 dollars per barrel, respectively. Um, the TB's market traded on a very active note yesterday, with slight bullish buyers seen on the long dated maturities. Interest were majorly seen on the long, on the mid to long end of the benchmark, up, particularly on the 31st March 2022, 25th August 2022, and the 27th October 2022 maturities, while trades were majorly executed on the 29th September 2022 and the 27th October 2022 maturities. The OMO market trade on a muted note yesterday as attention was um, shifted to the OMO auction. At the OMO auction, the CBI sold a total of 25 billion from an offer amount of 25 billion, while maintaining stock rates are 7%, 8.5%, .5 and 10.1% across the three tenors on offer. The bonds market trade on a muted note yesterday, with interest majorly seen on the mid to long end of the benchmark of especially on the 2036, 2037, and the 2049 maturities. We witnessed offers on the 2049 security improve from the 12.76 that was seen on Wednesday to set to at above 12.84% um, 12, above 12 levels in Trati, where few trades were executed on the 12, 2037 and the 2045 maturities. The euro bond market trade on a very active note yesterday with buy side interest in across the sovereigns, while mis sentiment we are seen across the corporate. The most actively traded sovereigns yesterday were the Nigerian 2025, 2037, and the long dated maturities, while the most actively traded corporate were the Assets Bank Euro Bond, First Bank Euro Bond, and the Zenith Bank Euro Bond. But today we expect the current sentiment in the bond market to persist as investors continue to select attractive offers across the curve. Why we expect the TB's market to continue to trade in line with the level of system liquidity. That'll be all for first income. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omorigi. Um, we'll now call on Justina and she'll be giving us some headlines from across Africa. Good morning, Justina. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, we start here. Um, big news yesterday was coming from MTN Nigeria, which said it's closed, it closed a 90 billion naira bond and also moves on to planning it to sell 101 billion naira worth of its um, shares. Also yesterday, the group released its third quarter results reporting that its service revenue rose 19.1%, revenue for data climbed 34.5%, FinTech was up 35%, while its EBITDA was up 24.1%. Also, MTN um, says it's offering bonus shares to Kenyans and other East African investors who would buy into the Ugandan IPO worth $250 million. In Ghana, the government says it has completed the takeover of Etel Tigo. Now, also in Zambia, um, Zambia and IM, the IMF yesterday resumed talks about agreements mapping out economic reforms and a medium-term fiscal framework and debt, a debt restructuring package. Um, according to the IMF, it says that it's op optimistic that um, the talks would um, yield. It, it is it's optimistic that the, the result, the talks would yield a positive outcome. 
in Egypt, um, the Central Bank of Egypt says net foreign reserves increased slightly by $29 million in October to reach $40.8 billion. Also, the Central Bank of Egypt and Libya are in talks to develop a framework for joint cooperation. And those are some of the stories we have here from Frontier Africa Reports. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Justina. We have now come to the special edition of today's session. Um, our, our economist, Ibuko Omoyeni, will be speaking to us on X-raying the e-Naira. Over to you, Ibuko. Thank you, Victoria. Um, I'm, going to I'm going to share some slides. Please allow me to share my slide. Okay, I, I, hope, I hope you can see the slides. Yes, we can. Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation on the INAIRA, Nigeria Central Bank Digital Currency. So let's begin with the brief background. So um, we know that since 2012, the CBN has been implementing a cashless policy system, which brought about the use of ATMs, point of sales machines, and other innovations in the tech ecosystem. Um, while currency circulation doubled over the period of 10 years, the value of digital payments has actually doubled just over four years. As of 2020, the value of, trans of digital transactions amounted to um, 1.06 times our nominal GDP, and this utterly underscores the numerous benefits associated with the ease of transacting via digital means. The most recent innovation, which we all know, that has been adopted across the world is the central bank digital currency. The CBDC does not only help to ease financial transactions, but also helps to achieve other broader objectives, which we'll examine later in this presentation. This brings us to the architecture of the e-Naira. It's safe to note here that the value of the e-Naira is the same value of the physical Naira note. And a notable feature is that it is non-interest bearing. So this means that money in your electronic wallet could have equal status as money in your actual pocket. They are outside the purview of banks and they cannot be used by banks to lend or transact. So the e-Naira is premised on a hybrid CBDC structure evolving two tiers. We have the CBN on one hand, and we have um, the banks and non-bank financial institutions on the other hand. While the CBN means the e-Naira and distributes to the financial institution and other agents, these institutions can distribute to individuals and businesses. With respect to the manner of operation, speed wallets are going to be operated by consumers while merchants would have their own wallets. People that have no bank accounts can operate the e naira However, they would have lower transaction limits and balances compared to those with bank accounts. Um, merchants, on the other hand, would have no transaction limit. However, um, auto triggers can be generated once their wallet balances exceed a set limit. That means that by the time um, the, the wallet balance exceeds a limit, they have to credit their fixed account or their bank account. 
we believe that this limit was introduced for um, risk management purposes and to also prevent liquidity challenges in the banking system. As it currently stands, there is a lot of um, about the in era because um, existing mobile applications actually execute us. We are the next that there are only four phases of implementation. So the first phase actually involves the onboarding of clients, the exchange of existing bank deposits with the in era as well as the in era wallet transfers from person to person. And we believe that this is one of the reasons why the CBN um, so as to encourage people to take up the app. This means that from January 23 next year, charges would apply in line with existing guidelines. So in phase two, we would see the onboarding of unbound customers. We recall that the CEO of BTIN, which is the um, CBN technical partner, he discussed the creation of uh, an application for non bank owners. And interestingly, um, users will also be able to transact using their local money transfer operators. And this is actually for the purpose of remittances. We recall that since the pandemic struck, there has been a decline in the amount of um, remittances. And this actually introduced, this actually brought about the introduction of agents and SMS support come on board. Um, at this stage also, at the, at the following stage, we also see that um, ministries, departments, and agencies would also be onboarded. And this will actually help um, fiscal transparency. Tackle, it will also help to tackle corruption and help in budgetary review. Um, in the final phase, we would see newer features of the e -Naira. That is offline and payment solutions. Also, we would see that we can exchange the e -Naira for other existing Hi, Ibuku. It seems like you're tripping up a bit. Hello, this Hi, Bukun. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you properly now. You can go on. I think I'll, I'll show my screen again. You can go on. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, I was on this slide. Um, so I was saying that the e-Naira in the first stage of, in the first phase of the e-Naira, we would see offline payment solutions. I would also see the enablement of cross-border payments because we can exchange the e-Naira for other existing central bank digital currencies. And as it currently stands, uh, the, the closest we have when it comes to CBDC is that of China, where the, China is trying to um, advance its e yuan for international trade. Uh, another, another close uh, replica is what we've seen between South Africa and four other, three other countries, which is a cross-country CBDC project. That's also to improve international trade between those countries. Um, onto this slide, onto our um, final slide, this is where we, we want to perform um, a SWOT analysis on the e-Naira. So theoretically, the e-Naira should actually improve credit flow in the economy and strengthen 
the mechanism for monetary policy. We recall that anytime the CBN reduces interest rates, this does not usually drill down to um, businesses unless through the development effort and not because of the um, high cost um, profile of banks. So we believe in that the INIRA could actually provide a platform for easier credit flow in the economy. Also, we believe the ability to transact using um, non-internet enabled phones with language support could also provide a strong, strong foothold for financial inclusion. The signups of um, MDAs, that is Ministry of Equipment and Agencies, could help to foster fiscal trans transparency and accountability. Also, Nigeria has a very a young population, which could also be a strength, as they could easily adopt the innovation. And that, that could help um, facilitate the success of the INAIRA, unlike the elderly population who prefer face time with bank officials and financial institutions. The INARA could also increase the CBN's oversight over the financial system, hereby um, detecting fraud and ensuring that IMTOs comply with the remittance process. As we have seen in recent times, the reluctance of um, individuals to take up the INARA could be a key witness. Even going by our poll, we discovered that about 70% of us are, are yet to sign up due to challenges. And this is also because we're in the first phase of implementation, transaction costs are expected to be to, to revert to the, the, the usual cost once the 90-day window is over. And we think that is going to be a big um, flag. Because why else should I take up the in era when the transaction costs are likely going to remain the same? Another key and weakness would be the privacy clause, unlike existing data regulations, which, which actually makes the owner of any application liable for any problems with the app. So we believe that is the key weakness of the INAIRA and it can actually prevent people from taking up the INAIRA. Um, lastly, another weakness we see is the possible use of um, exchange rates that are artificially low. This means that, for example, if you have to transfer money from the US to Nigeria via the INAIRA, it could be done at the INE window rate. Meanwhile, they see a parallel market with that has a wider margin. Um, what opportunities do we see in the in era? We see the enablement of cross-border transfers and the ability of individuals to exchange CBDCs for another. This could actually help to tackle the dollarization of economies because you can easily transact without really using the dollar. And that could actually help to improve um, global flows. Can you hear me now, Victoria? Am I still breaking? Um, no, we can hear you properly. OK. Um, and, and another key feature we see is the enablement of social transfers. And we believe this can be executed at advanced stages of development. As it currently stands, Nigeria does not have the fiscal capacity to implement stimulus measures. And that's because of its high population. Um, and this, this um, app could actually help, um, it could help to get the exact number of people in the country because BVN and NI, those are unique identities. Those are unique identification measures. The threat we, that we see from the CBDC issuance, it includes cybersecurity. And what, what that, what that and I, I believe that is the most obvious threat especially when we hear of reports of hackers getting into some exchanges. Um, lastly, fall in banking system liquidity. Um, we believe that if there is a massive sign up on the INRA platform, it could actually affect deposits of banks negatively because your INRA cannot be assessed by banks for um, lending or investing. And that could actually affect system liquidity. But we believe that that is why the CBN has limits on um, how, how on, on the wallet balance and transaction, trans, transaction limits by day. So this sums it up, um, this sums up our views on the in era. So do we have any questions?
Um, thank you, Ibuko. We have um, Dozier's hands raised. Um, Dozier, you may speak. Um, thank you, Ibuko, for your presentation. It was very enlightening. I just had a quick question. Um, during your research, did the CBN mention um, what blockchain the ENARA is going to work on? I mean, going to be um, running on because like the blockchain also affects the blockchain it runs also has, affects the speeds of the transactions. So I just wanted to know, like, did the CBN mention what blockchain the ENARA will be running on? That's my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, on that question, what we have, the information we have, is that the the company that is handling the um the technology is a bit ink, and it actually successfully rolled out the CBDC in the Eastern Caribbean countries. So we don't have uh, much information on how the, um, the, the private blockchain works because definitely it's not, it's not a public blockchain. What we also know is that the CBN can assess bulk transactions at once. It can't assess um, transactions at an individual level yet until probably further upgrades are done on the app. Okay, thank you, Bukun. We have another hand raised. Um, Wahab, you may speak now. Yes. Okay, Th thank you. Thank you, Vetiba team. Thank you, Bukun, for the presentation. So I just want a, a quick take on uh, whether there is uh, the FX side of the Inera. Is it open to foreign transactions for now? Uh, if not yet, uh, as CBN has spoken about uh, at some point, will it be open for uh, foreign transactions? Because uh, I'm just trying to understand the exact benefit of Inera to the already uh, banked uh, population. Now, from the look of it, you have your if you do online transactions, it is not much different from this Inera. So, what exactly is the unique features aside the uh, trying to get more people into the banking system, which some people can still come in because not everybody can use uh, internet facility to do transactions. I know they will soon get to the point where they create app for for those people, most of the people in the rural area. So I don't know if there's any features to say you can uh, use it for foreign transaction. Whether other country central banks uh, recognize the winner or not. So I just want. Uh, Okay, thank you for that question. And like I said, the implementation is in phases and we are currently in phase one. So phase one, basically every other app out there can do what phase one does. But when we look at phase two, we will see IMTOs come on the app and that means remittances can be done easier. If you look at stage four, you'll be able to exchange your CBDC for maybe the EU one or for, for another country's central bank digital currency. So we believe we would see newer features as each phase comes and goes. Thank you, I've answered that question. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ibuko. I also have a question. Um, do we see, could, should we see um, the cost of printing money going down, bearing in mind that um, there would also be cost attached to maintaining the e -Naira? Thank you for that question, Victoria. Um, interestingly, yesterday, the CBN released a currency operations report. And it showed that in 2020, the CBN, for the very first time in a long time, the cost of printing money actually reduced. So I believe this is one of the reasons why the CBN is advancing the CBDC. It would help to reduce the amount of um, money being printed. But again, we can't, we can't rule that out yet, considering the fact that um, it is still a nascent idea and it requires it require time for scalability. I, I hope I've answered your question. Um, yes, uh, I have one more question. Um, how likely do you think users will be able to adapt to this, given that it is not interest-bearing? 
Um, wouldn't indiv individuals prefer to leave their monies with other institutions? Okay, um, thank you for that question. Um, like I said earlier, the e naira is just is just as synonymous as your physical naira, but with added benefit. So by the time we would see IMTOs come on, but by the time we would see the possibility for you to exchange your e naira for e yuan, then there will be added benefits, and it will not just be about interest or no interest because they are outside the banks. Banks cannot make loans out of your digital wallet. They can't make. They, they can't use your deposits, right? They are, it's outside their purview. So we believe once we have added features, there will be um, other benefits outside interest. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we would send the slides to uh, our participant. Um, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to us via uh, salesadvertiva.com or researchadvertiva.com. In the absence of any other questions, we have come to the end of today's session. On behalf of Vetiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have a great weekend ahead and a productive day also. Thank you and good morning.